Hey everyone, today we're gonna to go over evals. How can you evaluate your crew? We're gonna use Crew AI, and then we're gonna use this open source evaluation library called OPIC, which is coming from the Comet uh, team. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and get started. So we have an event bus, which allows you to subscribe to events. And you can do this with our event listener. Our event listener allows you to inspect things from a crew kickoff to any flow kickoffs. So for example, when we kick off a crew, agents start spinning up, they begin executing tasks, and then they call LMs, they call tools, uh, and together we could use that to subscribe to events that we want. And the most important thing when it comes to kicking off a crew is listening to your task completed event. From here, we could take things from the task description, its expected output, the context from that task, the tool calls uh, made during that task event, and use that to evaluate the performance of that task, and then two, kind of gauge for hallucinations. So with that said, let's go ahead and show you guys how you can create your own listener to get this set up. Before we get started, I just wanna show off the tools that we're using. So we're going to be using a crew. The provided example will be coming from one of our templates. We also have the OPIC eval library that we're going to use from the team at Comet. It's an open source library for being able to trace, but also be able to evaluate your AI agents or any LLM. And from here, we're going to also use event listeners. So again, everything's going to be derived from our event bus. And from there, we could set up our custom listener, how we're going to register that, and then import that, import certain events that we want to listen to. So with that said, let's go ahead and start building our first custom listener. So let's set up our first event listener. We're going to create a class that will extend base event listener, and we're gonna set it up from here. From here, it's going to take uh, an event bus, and we're going to subscribe to events that we care about. So on um, task completed event, we want to create a method or a function from here where we can track that. We have a task that we want to evaluate, which is this contracts of interest task. So what we can do is if source dot name of the task is that, we can start to do something. We can even use our own CrewAI task evaluator. So we can set that up with evaluator, evaluator equals task evaluator. And what that's going to take is uh, an original agent, which is the agent that's executing this task. From there, we could do evaluator, uh, evaluation equals evaluator dot evaluate and it's going to take a task, and we're going to pass this task. So every source is essentially uh, a derivative of this event. So if an agent is executing, if we have like a, an event that's agent executing, that's an agent. Uh, if it's a task completed event, the source is a task. So wherever this is being emitted from is what we have access to in terms of source, and then the, a completed event gives us details like oh, the end task output, the task itself, things like that. So what we want to see from here is when we're evaluating, we want to evaluate the, the task itself and then the end output. So event that output. And then we can do evaluation quality and suggestions as that's what's going to be evaluated. So, how do we set this, uh, set this uh, listener up into our crew? All you're gonna to have to do is import that. So we could import our eval listener and all you would have to do is just instantiate it. Boom, that's it. So when we run create run, now we could listen and print for this evaluation. So let's inspect our evaluation. So we got a score of seven. We got some suggestions on one, how we can improve our prompts, right? As well as suggestions on how um, our AI agents can improve. So, hey, provide page numbers for all reference 
sections and the contracts to improve accuracy and verifiability, again, when it comes to your end outputs. Ensure that the full text of both contracts are available for more comprehensive analysis. Again, this is the contract analysis use case. And again, this is something you could get on our templates page, but for the most part, it's giving us suggestions on how the LMs can improve. And again, this is open source, so you can inspect our task evaluator and see what it's actually doing underneath the hood. So now, time for how can we track for hallucinations? All right, so let's set up OPIC. So to install it, you do UV add OPIC. When you're in the crew a project, you want to use UV add. And we're going to import it. So from OPIC, evaluation metrics, import hallucination. And then from here, you could set it up. So hallucination eval equals hallucination. And what we want is this hallucination result is going to take in our hallucination eval and we're going to score it. And it's going to take in two types of things. So it's going to take in an input, which is going to take our source, it already knows what to do, source prompt, and we're going to add, let's do line, and then from here, let's add, it's called source prompt context. So inputs, we're going to be passing in the source prompt. The source prompt is important because it's the system messages or all the messages uh, passed to the LLM from the task level. Then source prompt context, is essentially all the context from previous test executions, the tools, the tool results coming into our uh, task, the task that's currently executing. So this conflicts of interest task. We're going to use that to compare against the output, which again, you already did that, event.task output. So let's print it. Print, let's have some nice spacing, do something like this, boom. Hallucination value, and then reason. Let's kick it off again. Create and run. Let's see what we get. So now we can see our hallucination scores. We get a score of 0 0.1, which means it's pretty good. The output appears mostly faithful, presenting the details of contracts accurately based on the provided information. There is a slight inconsistency. The output mentions the lack of page numbers in the provided context. That's fine, maybe that's why it's influencing the score, which may not accurately reflect the full content was shared, including section references. The differentiation between warranty, disclaimers, and liability limitations is accurately described. However, the output could have slightly misunderstood the focus on indirect conflict checks over explicating potential conflicts of cause of clause interpretations. So again, very little hallucination scores. I think this is pretty much good to go if I were to kind of like evaluate uh, myself. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much using a custom um, evaluator for judging hallucinations. We use an open source tool from OPIC. So again, super awesome. And this is something you could easily set up for the other tasks that you have in your crew. Uh, you could bring this into flows as well. So again, I would recommend you guys to check out our docs on event listeners, all the methods you could subscribe to, all the events you sub subscribe to, and how you can set up your own event uh, to set up for handling evals. So pretty much we set up our own ways of listening to events within our crew. You could also do this within a flow. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, we have the ability to kind of subscribe to events that we want to listen to, and from there, we can set up custom evals with the context, with the agents that were used, with the tasks that were called within the whole crew itself, or individual methods within a certain flow. So again, I would recommend go to our docs to check that out. But yeah, that was custom evals with OPIC, with our own evals at crew, and how you can evaluate tasks that are executed by your AI agents within the crew AI framework. So yeah, if you found that super helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and enjoy. Thanks, y'all. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.